A Meal in the Soup Terrain by Astrid Lindgren Once upon a time, there was a boy called Emil, who lived in Lunaberga. He was a harem scarum, stubborn little chap, not as nice as you, of course, but he looked nice enough, that is to say, when he wasn't screaming. He had round blue eyes, a round apple-cheeked face, and a mop of fair hair. In fact, he often looked so nice that people might have thought he was a perfect little angel. But they would have been quite wrong. He was five years old and as strong as a young ox, and he lived in Kuttholt in Lunebaga, a small village in Schmarland in Sweden. One day his father went to town and bought him a cap. Emil was so delighted with his cap and wanted to wear it when he went to bed. His mother wanted to hang it on a peg in the wall, but Emil yelled so that you could have heard it in all Lunebaga, and he slept with his cap on for nearly three weeks. It was one of those with a shiny black peak and a blue crown, and really did feel rather bumpy. But the great thing was that he had got his own way. That was the point, you see. One Christmas his mother tried to get him to eat some greens, as greens are good for you. But Emil said, No. Won't you eat any greens? asked his mother. Why, yes, said Emil. Real greens. And then he sat quietly down behind the Christmas tree and started chewing it. But he soon tired of that because it scratched his mouth. Well, that just shows you how stubborn Emil was. He wanted to be the boss of his father and mother and the entire household, in fact the whole of Lunabaga itself. But the Lunabagas weren't going to put up with that. Ay, I pity the poor folk up in Cutholt. Having such a badly behaved boy, they'll never make anything of him, they said. Yes, that's what they thought. But they wouldn't have said so if they had have known how Emil was going to turn out. Fancy if they had known he was going to be president of the local council when he grew up. You probably don't know what it means to be president of the local council, but I can assure you that it is something very grand, and that's what Emil was going to be later on. But just now we will talk about what happened when Emil was a little boy, living in Cutholt in Schmarland, with his father, whose name was Anton Svensson, and his mother, whose name was Alma Svensson, and his little sister Ida. There was a farm lad too, called Alfred and a maidservant called Lena. Because when Emil was a little boy, there were servants in Lunebaga and everywhere else. There were farm hands who ploughed and tended the horses and cattle and bought in the hay and planted potatoes, and maid servants who milked and washed up and scrubbed and sang to the children. Now you know who lived in Cutholt. Father Anton, Mother Alma, little Ida, Alfred and Lena. And there were two horses and a pair of oxen, eight cows, three pigs, ten sheep, fifteen hens, a cock, a cat, and a dog. Oh, and of course, Emil. Catholt was a lovely little farmstead, with a red-painted house on a hill and apple trees, and lilac bushes all around it, and fields and plough land and hedges and a lake and a great big wood. It would have been quiet and peaceful in Catholt, except for Emil. He's always getting into mischief, that boy, said Lena. And if he doesn't get into mischief on his own, something's always happening to him. I've never seen such a child. But Emil's mother always stuck up for him. Oh, he's not so bad, she said. Today he's only pinched Ida and spilt the cream for the coffee, that's all. Oh, yes, and he did chase the cat around the hen house. I think he's beginning to behave better and growing less wild. And he really wasn't all that bad at all. No one could really call him that. He was very fond of Ida and the cat, but he just had to pinch Ida to make her give him her bread and jam, and he chased the cat just in fun to see if he could run as fast as it could, although, of course, the cat didn't understand this. It was on the 7th of March that Emil was so good and only pinched Ida and upset the cream and chased the cat. But now you shall hear about three other days in Emil's life when other things happened, either because he got himself into mischief, as Lena said, or because things always happened, wherever Emil was. We can begin with Tuesday, the 22nd of May, when Emil got his head stuck in the soup tureen. That day they were having meat broth for dinner in Catholt. Lena had served it up in the flowered soup tureen, and they were all sitting around the kitchen table eating soup, most especially Emil. He liked soup. You could hear that the way he ate it. 
Must you make that noise, Emil? asked his mother. Well, you can't tell you're having soup otherwise, said Emil. Everyone had as much as they wanted, and the chewing was empty except for a tiny little drop left at the bottom. But Emil wanted that little drop, and the only way he could get it was by pushing his head into the chewing and sucking it up. And that's exactly what he did. But just fancy, when he tried to get his head out again, he couldn't. He was stuck fast. It frightened him, and he jumped up from the table and stood there with a the chewing like a tub on his head. It came right down over his eyes and ears. He hit at it and screamed. Lena was very upset. Our lovely soup, Turin, she said. Our lovely bowl with the flowers on it. Whatever shall we put the soup in now? Because, although she wasn't very bright, she did realize that while Emil was in the Turin, it would be impossible to serve the soup in it. Emil's mother, however, was more worried about Emil. Dear sakes alive, how shall we get this child out? We'll have to get the poke and break the bowl. Have you taken leave of your senses, woman? asked Emil's father. That bowl cost four kroner. Let me give it a try first, said Alfred, who was a strong, hefty farmhand. He took hold of both handles and lifted the chewing right high up in the air. But what good was that? Emil went with it because he was stuck really tight, and there he hung, kicking, trying to get back on the ground again. Look out! Look out! Let me down! Look out, I tell you! He yelled, so Alfred let go. Now everybody was really upset. They stood in the kitchen, in a ring around Emil, wondering what to do. Father Anton, Mother Alma, Little Eda, Alfred and Lena. Nobody could think of a good way of getting Emil out of the soup tureen. Look, Emil's crying, said little Eda, pointing at two big tears sliding down Emil's cheeks from under the edge of the tureen. No, I'm not, said Emil. It's just soup. He sounded as cocky as ever, but it isn't much fun being stuck inside a soup tureen, and supposing he never managed to get out. Poor Emil. When would he be able to wear his cap again? Emil's mother was in great distress about her little boy. She wanted to take the poker and break the tureen, but his father said, Not on any account. That bowl cost four kroner. We had better go to the doctor in Mariana Lund. He'll be able to get it off. He'll only charge three kroner, and that way we've saved a kroner. Emil's mother thought that was a good idea. It isn't every day that you can save a whole kroner. Think of all the nice things you could buy with that. Perhaps something for little Ida? who would have to stay at home while Emil was out enjoying the trip. Now all was hurry and bustle in Catholt. Emil must be made tidy. He must be washed and dressed in his best clothes. But he couldn't have his hair combed, of course, and nobody could wash his ears, although they certainly needed washing. His mother did try to get her finger under the rim of the soup tureen so as to get at one of Emil's ears, but that wasn't much use, for she, too, got stuck in the bowl. There now, said little Eda, and Father Anton got very angry, though as a rule he was very good-tempered. <laughs> Does anyone else want to get stuck in this tureen? he shouted. Well, get it off for goodness sake, and I'll bring out the big hay wagon and take everyone in the house over to the doctor in Marianalund. But Emil's mother wriggled her finger and managed to get out. You'll have to go without washing your ears, Emil, she said, blowing on her finger. A pleased smile could be seen under the rim of the tureen, and Emil said, That's the first bit of luck I've had in this tureen. Alfred had brought the horse and trap to the front steps, and Emil now came out to climb into the trap. Emil looked very smart in his striped Sunday suit and black button boots and the soup tureen. Of course, it did look a trifle unusual, but it was gay and flowery, something like a new-fashioned summer hat. The only criticism that might have been made was that it came down rather too far over Emil's eyes. Then they all set off for Marianne Lund. Be sure to look after little Eda properly while we're away, called Emil's mother. She sat in front with Emil's father. Emil and the Turin sat in the back, and Emil had his cap beside him on the seat, because of course he would need something to put on his head for the journey back home. 
A good job he remembered that one. What shall I get ready for supper? Shouted Lena, just as the trap was moving off. Anything you like! Called back Emil's mother. I've other things to think about just now. Okay, well then I'll make meat broth then! Said Lena. But at that moment she saw something flowery disappearing round the corner of the road and remembered what had happened. She turned sadly back to Alfred and little Lena. Well, I, I guess it'll have to be black pudding and pork instead, she said. Emil had been to Marianne several times. He used to like sitting high up in the trap, watching the winding road, and looking at the farms I passed on the way, and the children who lived in them, and the dogs that barked at the gates, and the horses and cows grazing in the meadows. But now it was hardly any fun at all. He sat with his soup tureen over his eyes and could only see a little bit of his own button boots from under the tightly fitting rim of the tureen. He had to keep on asking his father, Where are we now? Have we got to the pancake place yet? Are we nearly at the pig place? Emil had made up his own names for all the farms along the road. The pancake place was so called because of two small, fat little children who had once stood by the gate eating pancakes as Emil went past and the pig place owed its name to a jolly little pig whose back Emil would scratch sometimes. But now he just sat gloomily looking down at his own button boots, unable to see either pancakes or jolly little pigs. Small wonder that he kept whining, Where are we now? Are we near that Mariana Lund? The doctor's waiting room was full of people when Emil and Turin went striding in. Everybody there was very sorry for him. They realised that an accident had happened, all except one horrid old man who laughed like anything, just as though there was something very funny about being stuck in a soup tureen. <laughs> <laughs> said the old man. Are your ears cold, my boy? No, said Emil. Well, why are you wearing that contraption then? asked the old man. Well, because otherwise my ears would be cold, said Emil. He too could be funny if he liked, although he was so young. Then it was his turn to go in and see the doctor, and the doctor didn't laugh at him. He just said, Good morning! What are you doing in there? Emil couldn't see the doctor, but in spite of that, of course, he had to greet him. So he bowed as low as he could, Turin and all, and then... <coughs> crash! went the Turin, and there it lay, broken in two. For Emil's head had banged against the doctor's desk on his way down. Ay, there goes four krona up in smoke, said Emil's father to his mother in a low voice. But the doctor heard him. Yes, it saved you a krona, he said, because I generally charge five krona for getting small boars out of soup tureens, but he's uh, managed to do that all by himself this time. Emil's father was pleased and grateful to Emil for having saved a whole krona. He hurriedly picked up the broken bowl and off he went with Emil and Emil's mother. When they came into the street, Emil's mother said, Fancy, we've saved a krona again. What shall we buy with it? Nothing. We'll save it, said Emil's father. But it is only fair that Emil should have five euro to put in his money box when we get home and he took a five euro piece out of his purse straight away and gave it to Emil. You can imagine how pleased Emil was with himself. So they set off home. Emil sat in the back seat, delighted with the five euro piece in his hand and the cap on his head, as he looked at the children and dogs and horses and pigs as they went past. Had Emil been an ordinary youngster, nothing more would have happened that day. But he wasn't. So guess what happened? He put the five euro bit in his mouth, just as they passed the pig place, a little plop was heard from the back seat. Emil had swallowed the five euro. Oh, said Emil, it did go down quick. Now there were renewed wails from Emil's mother. Dear sakes alive, how are we going to get that five euro out of the child? We'll have to go back to the doctor. <laughs> how well you work things out said Emil's father. Shall we pay the doctor five krona to get back five euro? What were your grades in math class when you were at school? Emil took the matter rather calmly. He patted his stomach and said, 
<laughs> I can be my own money box and have a five a piece in my tummy just as well as in a piggy bank because it's no good trying to get anything out of that. I tried with a kitchen knife once, so I know. But Emil's mother wouldn't give way. She wanted to go back to the doctor with Emil. I didn't say anything that time he swallowed those trouser buttons, she reminded Emil's father, but a five a piece is much harder metal. Believe me, it might be very dangerous. And she managed to scare Emil's father so much that he turned the horse and drove back to Marianulund, because he too was anxious about his boy. They went rushing breathlessly into the doctor's surgery. <laughs> Have you forgotten something? asked the doctor. No, it's that Emil has swallowed, has now swallowed a five a bit, said Emil's father. So if you would perform perhaps a small operation on him for four kroner, say, the five euro could go towards the cost, of course. But Emil tugged at his father's coat and whispered, No, he can't. The five euro piece is mine. But the doctor had no intention of taking Emil's five euro away from him. There was no need for an operation, he said. The coin would turn up all right in a couple of days. But you should eat five buns, said the doctor to Emil so that the five Erda can have a bit of company in there and not scratch your stomach so much. He was a delightful doctor, and he didn't charge anything either. Emil's father was so pleased that he beamed when they went out again. Emil's mother wanted to go straight away to buy buns for Emil at the Miss Anderson's home bakery. No need for that, said Emil's father. We've got buns at home. Emil thought for a moment. He was clever at working things out and was hungry too, so he said, I've got five Erda inside me, and if I could get at it, I would buy my own buns. He reflected for a little longer, and then he said, Can't you lend me five Erda for a couple of days, father? You'll get it back, sure as eggs. Emil's father thought this was fair, and he agreed, and off they went to Miss Anderson's home bakery and bought five buns for Emil, splendid buns, round and golden brown with sugar on them. Emil gobbled them straight up. Mmm, that's the best medicine I've ever had in my whole life, said he. Emil's father had become so pleased and excited all of a sudden that he didn't know what he was doing. We've saved lots of money today, he said, and he bought five euros worth of peppermint rock for little Eater at home. Then Emil and his parents went back to Cuddled. As soon as Emil's father got inside the door, and before he had even taken off his hat and coat, he stuck the tureen together again. It wasn't that difficult, though. It had only been broken into two pieces. Lena was so pleased that she jumped for joy and shouted to Alfred, who was unharnessing the horse, Now there'll be meat broth again in Catholt! That's what she thought, you see. She had totally forgotten about Emil. That evening, Emil played longer than usual with little Ida. He built a cottage for her among the stones and boulders in the meadow. She thought that was great fun. And he only pinched her a little bit each time he wanted some peppermint rock. Then it began to get dark, and Emil and little Ida thought about going to bed. They went into the kitchen to see if their mother was there, but she wasn't. Nobody was. Only the soup tureen. It stood idle on the table, all mended and fine. Emil and little Ida stood looking at the wonderful tureen, which had been travelling about all day. Fancy all the way to Mariana Lund, said little Ida. And then, how did you get your head into the tureen, Emil? Oh, it was easy, said Emil. I just did this. At that moment, Emil's mother came into the kitchen, and the first thing she saw was Emil standing with the tureen on his head. Emil struck at the tureen. Little Ida screamed. Emil screamed as well. For now, he was stuck fast all over again, as he had been before. Then his mother took the poker and whacked the tureen so that it smashed with a noise that could be heard all over Lernabella. <coughs> Crash! It went and flew into a thousand pieces. Bits of it showered all over Emil. Emil's father heard the noise and came rushing inwards. He stood silent in the kitchen doorway, and saw Emil and the bits of the tureen and the poker Emil's mother was holding. Not a word did Emil's father say. He just turned and went back outside into the sheepfold. But 
two days later he got five Ura from Emil, which was some comfort. That shows you something of the sort of boy Emil was. It was on Tuesday, the 22nd of May, that the soup tureen business happened. Translated from the Swedish by Lillian Seaton. Read by Ingrid Staby for Story Zone.